Uh, once I just said a few words about what we are going to show, the first thing is basically I will set the scene a bit. It's timesheets in SharePoint in a document library. They need to be signed by three parties, consultant, the project manager, and the external client. And of course, we want to see the signed document back to uh, SharePoint. He will do that in three different scenarios quickly. The custom integration with the API, integration via Power Automate, and then he will show you what it would look like if you enhance that Power Automate integration with a Power App. So Yannick, the floor is completely yours. Time to share my screen. Thank you, Magali. And I will hope to fulfill um, all the high expectations now. Do you see the screen with the browser? Just make sure that I'm sharing the correct screen. Yes. Yes, okay. So this is SharePoint. This is a document library in SharePoint and it contains three timesheets already. I have one finished in case that something goes wrong with this demo, at least I can show you the final result. So there are three timesheets in here. Let me open one so you can see. Um, it has a timesheet, all the hours that I uh, worked on a project in February. And it has to be signed by three people. So on these lines, the signatures need to uh, be added. Preferably, we do that with an e-signature solution with Connective, because that's a lot easier than printing it, signing it manually. So let's see the first way that we can do that. So let's select this one. And the first method is uh, custom built with the API. So it uses the SharePoint framework, which is the development toolkit for SharePoint, to create a totally custom um, flow or application interface inside SharePoint. So all of this is custom built. Um, the UI, the integration with the API of Connective, everything. It takes a couple of days to write all this code. So you see here that for each of the fields, there is some information that can be selected. So first of all, you have to provide the email address, the first name and the last name of the person that will sign on the consultant line. Same goes for project manager and same goes for client. And then you have to select the signing type. You can see here, these are all the signing types that are enabled on my environment or my connective environment. So you can select um, any of these. Now, for the purpose of this demo, it's a lot easier to choose the manual signing type. So this is what we will do. Now, when I click this button, it will send all of this information together with the selected document to the connective API directly. Now, it will take some time, so I will not finish this flow. We can do the same thing using Power Automate. So with the custom development, it takes a couple of days to build this integration. Now with Power Automate and the new connector that's available for connective in uh, the Power Platform, it takes a couple of hours, well, one or two hours to automate this. So you see here that I created a custom Power Automate flow signed with Connective. So I still have this same timesheet selected. I do sign with uh, Connective and it will pop open a side panel where I can provide similar information for consultant, project manager and client. I simplified this flow already so you don't have to select the signing method. It will automatically default to manual. So here we fill in um, the people and you see that offers you suggestions from your Office 365 environment directly. So I'll pick myself, I'll pick Jonathan as the project manager, and I'll pick Jane as the client. So you see here, all this information is selected and we can do run flow. This UI does not have to be built. It's available in the um, Microsoft 365 within SharePoint uh, by default. It just uses all of the inputs that you define in your flow and it renders this UI. This also means you don't have any control over how it looks and feels. So it's these three fields and it's like this. You cannot change it, you cannot tweak it. This is how it's rendered on the page. Just a question, Yannick, because indeed you have now three fill-in fields. So if I understood it well, you still can choose what you want your user to fill in. So you did it for demo purposes to uh, just choose these fields. But if, for example, I want my employees to be able to choose the signing methods, this could be a selection field. 
Yes. So we would change um, the Power Automate flow a little bit to accept additional input methods. And those input methods will be rendered in the screen. So one of Perfect. those input methods, methods would be signing type. And then it would show up in the screen as well. And you can still select it. You can use three different fields so that each of these people can use a different signing type. So that all of the flexibility is there in your Power Automate flow. Perfect. Thank you. So I will cancel this one because the last thing that I want to show is the integration with uh, Power Apps. So like I said, with Power Automate, you have no ability to change the look and feel of your uh, form. So with Power Apps, which is built on top of the same Power Automate flow, so in the backend, it will use the same Power Automate flow, you can uh, build a custom UI on top of that Power Automate flow and your SharePoint library. So let's refresh the screen. So you see here that will show all of the timesheets that are available in uh, the SharePoint document library. Let me select this one. And it still has the same three fields. Here as well, I will select the three people, Jonathan as project manager and Jane as the client. And when we send this for signing, which I will do already because it makes it easier for the people that need to sign it, um, in the backend, it will uh, send all of this information to my Power Automate flow. In the Power Automate flow, it will use the different steps and provide all the information to Connective. Now, when this is filled in, it should send me an email. So we're waiting for this email to drop in. Let me see. There it is. So you get the email uh, letting me know that I need to sign uh, a document. So I will sign as the consultant. So it opens the uh, signing portal of Connective. I have to sign here. Two other people will sign on the different fields. I check this box, I start signing. And because of the fact that I sign manually, I can just scribble what I want on this line. Click next and the document will be signed on this line. Let's wait and see until my documents or my signatures are added to the document. So this is done. I will close the screen. So in the backend, um, Lotte is already signing on the two other uh, fields. And then if all goes well, I'm going to go here. You see in the meantime that the connective status is updated to pending. This means the document has been sent to um, connective and it's pending signing for all three signers. I have signed my uh, on my field. I'm waiting for a lot of to sign the two others, and then it will return the document to SharePoint. Now, it is taking a little while, so I will show you the final result um, that I did an hour ago for this timesheet. So if we open this one, you see that the signed document is returned from um, e-signatures and all of the information, all of the signers um, are on here. So now we have the signed document inside uh, SharePoint again. Yannick, and I think uh, some of the people are interested as well in to know how you configure that because uh, if I understand it well, the fact that you can see the status, the fact that you can send it out for a signature, you all did it via Power Automate. And in the last uh, scenario, you showed it where you had the Cubix uh, branding and all, you use the Power app to enhance the branding. So just to show and to let us at least know that you can either use what is standard available in Power Automate. So you will have fill in fields that already look good and be able to configure what your signers need to fill in and whatnot. And uh, on top of that, with the Power App, you can really brand it, put the buttons wherever you want and uh, choose what you want your employees or customers to see. Um, but I think, yeah, some of them just wanna know how can I uh, configure that? And I see, I just want to point out, I see a lot of questions of you raising and uh, coming up. If we can't answer them, we will for sure do it. Uh, and we will answer them one by one. Uh, and I'm very pleased to see all this interest, uh, but don't worry, we will for sure answer all of your questions. 
There are a lot of interesting questions, but I can't seem to follow with the chat to get them answered no. now. No. So um, you understood correctly, Magali. So we're using a uh, custom API, which is a lot of work. And then we're using the Power Automate flow to do the integration with Connective, which is a lot simpler. But then you don't have the same UI customizability. And that's why we use Power Apps to create a custom UI on top of that Power Automate flow. Now, um, how does that work? Basically, I created three Power Automate flows. Um, first one is this one. So this is the Power Automate flow that gets triggered from SharePoint. You notice the SharePoint icon. So when we um, trigger Power Automate from SharePoint, it will be starting this uh, flow. Same for when we use Power Apps. This is the one that will be started when um, triggering Power Apps. And the reason why it's two different ones is because one Power Automate flow can only be triggered in one way. So a flow can only be triggered by either um, Power Apps or SharePoint. And that's why I created a third uh, flow. Because this one and this one just call this one, um, this flow, with all the information that's provided by either Power Apps or Connective, uh, uh, SharePoint, excuse me. And that's sent to uh, this workflow. Now, if we open this workflow, we will see hopefully, if the page loads, um, all of the runs. So this is the one that we did four minutes ago. So if we go look at this flow, you see that some input is received. I will be fetching from SharePoint the file content from the file that we selected. So it comes from my SharePoint environment with this file identifier. All of the content is uh, loaded up in base64 encoding for all the uh, techni technical people that are um, in this webinar. And then I will use the connective action, create an instant package. So when we create an instant package, it will create the package, upload the document inside the package, uh, add the signers and the signing methods all in one action. This is simple to create, but you can of course use all of the other more complex uh, actions the building blocks that Magali showed before to just create a, a more uh, adjustable flow where you just create the package yourself, you add the document to your package, and this is how you could add multiple documents to the same package. For example, you just add the same action twice or three times. Um, you set the process information, you set the package status, you could uh, fetch the package information afterwards or the package uh, status. And um, so this is the alternative method. Now for my demo, I just went with the easiest uh, building block in here. So this brings us to the end of my demo. So we're using these building blocks to create a very simple Power Automate flow. And you see it's one, two, three, four steps while only the sh get from SharePoint and the one going to Connective is actually um, one that you need to configure. All the others are quite technical. So it's a lot easier to get integrated with Connective. And the fun part is that the Connective um, connector is just available from the store. So you just search for Connective. You find the Connective e-signatures connector, and you find all the actions that are available.